Because the Word of God isn't changed. The Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The Word of God is eternal. And Jesus said, my words will never fade away. They are eternal. You follow me? So, here's the thing. We are to keep our minds on things which are above. And I just preached a sermon uh, Thursday uh, at a funeral. And in this funeral, I, and I quoted a scripture I generally quote at funerals. And, and the word was that God actually, it is that we, I'm trying to remember how it goes. <laughs> it's a scripture over in Revelation chapter 21. And uh, he said that there shall be no, oh, here it is. He'll wipe all tears from our eyes. I had to pull it up. But he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things passed away. And I've quoted that at pretty much almost every funeral I've ever preached. No more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, for the former things have passed away, and all things are going to be made new. And, and we go through that and think, oh, that's wonderful. He'll wipe every tear from our eyes, and he's going to change everything. But folks, we're supposed to have our eyes on that kind of stuff. And here's what I didn't say. One incredible act of love. Because of one incredible act of love, he set this whole thing up. Where everything is going to be changed for good. There will be no more death or sorrow. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And a new Jerusalem will come down to a new refurbished earth. And it's going to be wonderful. There will be wonderful rivers and, and fruit. And it will be a wonderful, wonderful thing that he's setting up. And we are to be looking for those things. Because of what he did on the cross, we have those things. And we want to be obedient to what he says and what he does. But he says he will our eyes are to be on the things above, not on the earth. And can we honestly say we're sitting with him and our eyes are on the things of God and not on the earth? Because right now, the earth, the world system, which is the equal satanic system, controls a lot of what we think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an example right here. It is what it is. <laughs> Here's the example. Just three or four months ago, it was patriotic to stand and listen to the national anthem. Put your hand over your heart, listen to the national anthem. That was patriotic. Now, within just a few months, to stand and listen to the national anthem is racist. Is that the world changing our value system just like that? The world changes daily. There was one man, one religious preacher that said, I, I'm going to stand. Everybody else is out. Do you know what kind of courage it took for that man to stand during the national anthem? But just a few months earlier, it would have been the other way around. And, and when he was asked later, he said, I'm a Christian. I don't think I'm any better than anybody else. In fact, the scripture is actually in the same chapter that we're in. Basically, it says in Christ we're all equal. Either male or female, slave or free, Greek or Jew. We're all equal. Under Christ, we're all equal. But this man said, I cannot bow to anyone other than God. Amen. And for me, I thought of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how all those people were bowing down to this idol. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego standing up like, you know, sticking out like a sore thumb, right? And that's where this guy was. Strong and incredible courage. Not hating, but loving. But putting God first. And I say all that just to say this. The world changes that fast. But the Word of God has been here for thousands of years, and it hadn't changed. And it is true as it was then. And as I said just a little bit ago, what he says about his return is 
is true. We'll get in that in a minute because it's in the scripture. But he says that you died. For you died. We died with him. So, do you feel like you died? <laughs> the thing is, we, it says this in Romans chapter 6, we are to reckon the old man dead. And we all were dead in our trespasses and sins. And we didn't need to straighten up. We didn't need rules and regulations to straighten us up. We could have been dead in our trespasses and sins and did all kinds of things right. We could have went to church every Sunday. We could have helped a little old lady cross the road. But we were dead. And most of us didn't go to church when we were dead, right? <laughs> but we were dead. Every single person who's been born on the face of this earth is born dead. Except for Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin. But we were born dead. And we had a need. <laughs> what was the need? If you're dead, you need life. And he came that we might have life and have it, have it more abundant. He wants to share life with you. He wants to give you his life. Now, if you're a Christian, the old man is dead with all his desires because he doesn't control you anymore. Because when you came to Christ, you received a new nature that wants to please God. And then you received the Holy Spirit who came to indwell you and give you life. It's Christ in you, your hope and glory. And now we walk in newness of life. So the old man that controlled everything about you is dead. And now we are united together with Christ and we sit with Christ in the heavenlies at the right hand of the Father. And we have authority over every demonic power in Jesus Christ. And we need to stand and take that authority right now as we pray. Because the old man is dead. And we need to keep our eyes on where we are really sitting. Because we don't want to be sitting with Pekin wearing blue. Right? In a sense. But, uh, you know, it was okay. <laughs> but the point is that in, in our lives, if we're sitting with Christ, people should be able to look and see that we're walking with Christ. And, you know, people got all kinds of different ideas of what's right and what's wrong and how we're right. But we don't live according to the world system. We live according to God's system. We live according to what the Word of God says. The unchanging Word of God, sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to pierce between the bone and the marrow and discern even between the soul and the spirit. That's the word of God who comes and pricks your heart and ministers to you. With one verse of scripture, God can change everything. And he's done it. So then he talks about, if you, if you go on, He says, therefore, right now, when Christ, who is our life, appears, so we were dead, he gave us life. When he appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So, what's he talking about? If you're walking with Christ, one of these days, the Lord himself will descend from heaven. You've heard me quote this, with the voice of of the archangel and the trumpet call of God and dead in Christ shall rise first and then we who are alive and yet remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to have a great reunion in the sky, right? The, the those who are who come with him will receive their resurrected bodies and we'll be changed and caught up together with them. We're going to have a great reunion in the air and God says to comfort ourselves with this we're to be comforted with this thought but then, we're going to be there for a little bit. We're going to, I believe we're going to go before the beam of seat of Christ. And then, 
will come his appearing. And we will appear with him at his second coming in glory. When Christ, who is our life, appears, we're going to appear with him. Woo! Nobody's, nobody's getting excited. Look, when Christ, who is your life? Who is your life? Christ is our life. When he appears, we will appear with him in glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'm really stretching for that. Amen. <laughs> really working for it. <laughs> and he says, Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Please listen to me on this. You can't be keeping your eyes on where you're sitting in Christ and be caught up in these sins. Paul says, put to death your members. You know, over in uh, Romans, one of my favorite scriptures, it says, put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. And, and here he's saying, put to death your members. Because apparently, even though the old man's dead, you still have the old nature. And you have to be able to say, I'm putting to death my members, and I'm not going to make a provision for the flesh. So what is your weakness? What is the place that, that Satan tempts you, that your flesh yearns for, that is not of God? Don't make provision for that thing. You know what it is. If it's lust, don't go to the places where you're going to be tempted, right? If, if you're working, somebody else is excited for you, and you're tempted, you'd be good to get another job. <laughs> don't, don't make any provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Mostly, I really believe that if you're in any kind of sense, such as fornication, or uncleanness, that's pure, you know, impure. Uh, passion and evil, and evil desire, or the worst of the worst, covetousness. Why is that the worst? Because that is saying, I am not going to be satisfied with anything that I have or anything God's given me, and I'm going to just want more and more and more. And when I see my neighbor has that, I'm going to want what he or she has. And when I see what I want, it's going to make my life better, I'm going to go after it. Because you're just not going to be content. And Paul said, I've learned to be content in all things. And that's where we need to be. Why is that? How can we be content in the middle of all things? How was Paul able to say that? Because he was with God. His eyes were on the one that was sitting at the right hand of the Father. His eyes were on the things which are above. He wasn't being covetousness. He wasn't coveting anybody else's car, anybody else's boat, anybody else's wife. He was seeking God's face. And, and Paul says that covetousness is idolatry. It's putting everything else above God. You're saying, man, Pastor, we want to hear some good stuff to get us all fired up. Well, this is. I'm trying to give you strength, and the strength is Jesus Christ. It's Him and us. It's His glory. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but he says, in which you yourselves once walked, we all, and Paul's talking to believers who say, they once walked in this, but they're not anymore. But now, you yourselves are to put off these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old with its deeds. If you look through the works of the flesh, and I've talked to you guys about this, the works of the flesh are striving. The fruit of the Spirit comes from abiding. It's walking with Him, keeping your eyes on Him, walking with Him, and you just produce wonderful fruit. And people want to be around you. But if you're in the flesh, you'll be angry and outbursts of wrath 
and, and all these things and really not really pleasant to be around. <laughs> You'll be contentious. That anger is the flesh. Now there are such things as righteous anger as we know. We know about Jesus lifting the tables and turning them over in the sanctuary which, or in the temple where people were using God's house to rip people off. You know, and, and Jesus was angry, but he was angry for God. He was angry for God's presence. He was angry because they turned a house of prayer into a house or a den of thieves. But for us, walking in this life, I'm telling you this, if you're constantly watching the news, you're going to be angry. And I don't care which side of the which side you're sitting on. <laughs> Get in the Word. Turn off the news. <laughs> it's going to be negative either side you look at it. I mean, it's good to be informed, but, oh. <laughs> you're not going to really hear too much stuff on the news that line up with the things that are above. More likely, it's going to be things of the earth. Because those are the folks who are running these programs. Wouldn't always that way, but it is. So, really, I just want to say, he tells us as believers not to lie to one another because we're family and we're close. And, and we need to be honest with one another. And, you know, you, it shouldn't be that a man can go to a bar and sit down next to another man, drink a couple of beers and spill everything to this other man. But he can't go to church and tell he what church what's going on in his life. You know what I'm saying? It should be that we love one another so much we can say what's going on without judging, but pray. And there are some things that will bother you that's going on. But we've got to understand. We have to be honest with one another. That's how that's how we uh Iron sharpens iron. That's how we grow. And in this church, if we can't leave, we can't do that anymore. Right? That's why it's important. But next week, it's going to be mandatory that we wear these. And really, we kind of wanted to start wearing them today, and a lot of people are. But I, I, that is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's going to be okay. The thing is, we've got to meet. Okay? Uh, we got to be here. So, at this point, I just want to pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you. Lord God, we want to be sitting with you, and we want to sit at the right hand with Jesus, but we want to be looking like Jesus. We want it to be where people can see you're on his side because of what we're wearing, in a sense, in the fruit of the Spirit. Father God, touch everyone in here. Let them feel your presence and walk with you. In Jesus' name.